Good morning, JQ. I, I guess I can't see you guys. I, I can hear, but I can't see. Uh, you're not missing anything. It's all right. How are you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm on my phone, so I'm trying to listen as much as possible. Well, you know, um, you guys have, do you guys have an event today or is that next Thursday? I think it's next Thursday. Next Thursday. Okay. So that was my bad. I was yeah, totally. Thanks. That, Cause I was like, JQ, can you come on about the event you're having tomorrow? <laughs> and he's like, I'm having an event tomorrow. And I said, I don't know. Aren't you? No, it's next Thursday. <laughs> we had to put in um, and, and, uh, our just, information just for, for the security. record. That, that's more, that's more uh, customs and the GVB event yeah. the airport is just the facility manager for it but this is one step though to prepare for uh the reopening of of travel it's those digital custom forms i believe that uh um we'd actually talked about i think with you m months ago right yes yeah, so so that that was in the works uh and you know we've come a long way uh since just talking about it and now it's being uh now it's being used. So, you know, uh, it, it's going to start out next week. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have some hiccups on it. But you know what? Uh, we're uh, we're moving into that uh, that era where uh, things are going to be online before you get to Guam. And uh, we're, we're um, having hoping that this thing is a success. And so we're not only uh, working on getting the customs forms, but we're trying to get also the health declaration forms that uh, folks fill out when they when they arrive uh, uh, for public health. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't gone gone through the airport in over a year. Uh, what is that health declaration form? So so basically is what public that since the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, this is the health declaration form that you go in and, and you fill out uh, and you, you you fill out one per person and uh, it, it basically just asks you, um, just like when you go to the doctor, what, what is your latest, uh, you know, have you been through, um, have you had any illness lately, have you had all this? So those, those are the kind of uh, questions that uh, the health declaration forms ask for. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the governor, she uh, unveiled her path to half uh, plan earlier this week. And I believe GIA has been part of uh, the planning process uh, to, to uh, get Guam to reopen. So can you provide more information uh, from the Guam International Airport Authority's uh, perspective on, on what people need to know um, if, in fact, that we meet that 50 percent um, vaccination threshold that she talked about so when people say we do and then uh, may 1st comes along uh, what do people need to know when they come into guam what's going to happen so at this time uh, what we're working on is that uh, if we get to that and we're, we're it looks like we're tracking uh um that way i think that i think the only thing that's holding us back from getting beyond the 50 percent threshold is the amount that we're receiving from cdc but uh, we have uh, uh, island island residents are are anxious and they're they're ready to to go in and get vaccinated once uh, once we have enough vaccinations here. But and so we're on track. Uh, but once we get to that fifty percent uh, um, vaccination rate, uh, and we're tracking that way, uh, when folks come in into the island that are traveling in and they have their negative COVID tests within uh, 72 hours, and it's not five days, it's 72 hours, um, that they would be able to, to go and uh, not go to the uh, quarantine facility. they will be able to come in and um, enjoy the, the island. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the goal. Um, so we're not there yet. Uh, we haven't been given the uh, green light. Uh, but that's what we're working towards. Right. And so um, I know that the CDC currently already requires that 72 hour pre arrival negative COVID test. But if you come from uh, an international destination, so if you're coming from the US mainland, you're going to have to have that regardless. Um, if uh, we implement the path to half and 
change the quarantine protocols on on May 1st. It, but with the CDC guidelines that are currently in place, have you had anybody come in that hasn't had that negative uh, PCR test? Oh, yeah, we have a lot. Be, because we have folks that are coming in and the, the quarantine guidelines right now, regardless if you have a PCR test or not, and you're not one of the exempted uh, passengers coming in, if you do come in with a negative uh, test, you're still going to the quarantine facility and still go through the process of getting tested on the sixth day. If you are if you test negative, then they'll make arrangements for you to be released to finish your home quarantine uh, at your rental location or at your residence. Um, so, but if the, you know, if we, we're tracking uh, the governor's guidance, if we get to that 50% rate and then we just continue to move up uh, because people are getting vaccinated, uh, that uh, she's rest assured that the folks, the, the community, and she's worried more about the, the residents of Guam, um, that uh, less likelihood for us to get back uh, and, and spike up again is uh, diminished. Mm-hmm. Um, I know previously we had discussed uh, the the possibility of uh, doing rapid testing up at the the airport. Uh, is that right. still on the table? You know that um, from from the airport's perspective, we're we're ready to execute. We've got we've uh, put space um, uh, for public health uh, when they're ready to execute. And that's still on the table. So uh, we we are making everything available for public health so, so they can uh, ensure that they can do their jobs. Um, that's still being discussed at, as of this day. Um, we are from the airport side also, you know, uh, and, and also um, uh, the task force side or the, the working group that's put together uh, by the governor with GBB and us and the and the uh, 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 hotel industry or the tourism industry, the stakeholders from the tourism industry, is we're also looking now and making sure that the folks that are coming here that are non-residents of Guam, they're here to visit, uh, that they have the ability to test uh, before they go back um, to wherever country they came from or what destinations they came from. Um, so that's being worked out uh, and, and to make it convenient for them where hopefully these uh, these locations can be at hotels or possibly the last resort at the airport. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's not a public health, uh, uh, that's not where public health authority lies. It's, it's for folks uh, that um, are leaving that want to get their tests before they go back to their country so that they can go and self-quarantine at home at their residence when they get back. Is that going to be a, a PCR test or a, a, one of the rapid tests? So so that that's, that's a good question. Um, and so what we need to find out is the, the different countries, what tests are they accepting uh, for, our, for these uh, people that are entering their, their um, countries? PCR test is the test uh, uh, that most of the world is accepting because that's the most uh, um, uh, guaranteed uh, results. But uh, we're looking; there, we're also looking if they're going to accept, uh, for example, the rapid testing or the Binex uh, uh, testing that's done. You you mentioned uh, not necessarily public health. So are you looking at uh, I don't know opening up like a little mini clinic with a I don't know a private partner over at the airport to offer these uh, tests for outbound travelers? Well, at this time, the only clinic or the only entity that has uh, has shown interest to try to go up uh, or to to try and do a test run at the airport. Uh, are the the laboratories um, more not more so the clinics? It's uh-huh. the labs that uh, that conduct the um, the the test results for the clinics. So those are the folks that have shown interest. Um, 
but not nothing is nothing is uh, set yet because we're still working on uh, the parameters of how this thing will work. And we got to get feedback from the uh, different countries on what test results uh, they'll accept. Mm -hmm. At this time, going to the U.S. to Hawaii, um, public health tests and uh, and the the tests coming in from the DLS labs are what's accepted in Hawaii. So we at least we know that, but uh, Korea, Taiwan, uh, Japan, um, and of course, Philippines, uh, we're, we're waiting for results or feedback from their consulates uh, to give us to find out wh what their countries will accept. Mm -hmm. is, is it the goal though to get it, uh, get that resolved by May 1st? Yes, ma'am. We're trying to. We're we're working, we're working as uh, quickly as we can uh, to get to get there. We're we're prepared to to uh, say the or we we have given uh, info that these are the tests that is available on island. Would you accept these tests? And so we're waiting for that feedback. Mm -hmm. Um. GVB, GHRA, they, they did this survey uh, with uh, businesses and, and members as well as non-members regarding um, vaccinations, you know, as we prepare right. for the reopening of travel. So for GIAA, what about uh, your employees there? Have they all been vaccinated or majority of them been vaccinated? I, I say all of the employees that have... Um that have opted to take the vaccination at G GIAA has been vaccinated. We do still have a lot of employees that are hesitant to take the vaccination, uh, but you know, we the, the best we can do is encourage them. We cannot force them to yeah. get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. What we've also done was we took a, um, uh, in, in, in uh, you know, um, Doing what GRCA did, we took all, we did a, a poll of all uh, people working at the airport, not just the GIA employees, but uh, even the um, the Customs and Border Protection, TSA, um, Lote, the, the vendors that work up there. Every, every uh, employee that works at the airport facility, we've took a poll and so we got those numbers we have identified um, those folks that uh, uh, haven't hasn't been vaccinated that want to get vaccinated. So we're ready to, and and we've given that number to uh, public health, and we're ready to execute. What um, uh, I think at UOG, their their facility and their processes are so smooth that uh, if once uh, public health uh, gives us the green light to get these folks. Uh, to UOG to get vaccinated, uh, we can execute. Oh. The alternative is that um, United Airlines uh, clinic uh, has been given approval by uh, Chicago uh, to allow their clinic to vaccinate uh, the folks that are at the associated with the airport. So that's a that's a um, uh, option that we gave public health if if we want to take away their um, uh, to to alleviate some of the the um, uh, people going to UOG that we can do it at United uh, Airlines Clinic up at the airport. Yeah, I, I think that's something that in an interview with Mary Rhodes uh, when we were talking about the uh, survey that was being conducted, they did kind of want to make it uh, easier for uh, industry professionals to get vaccinated, maybe not necessarily at UOG, and if, if they had to, yeah, but um, like at hotels or, or, or somewhere right. you know close by. So yeah, keep us posted on that. But before we let you go, because we do have a, a special guest coming on uh, in a few minutes, uh, did you, the chief of police, he, he had his oversight hearing yesterday. <laughs> he mentioned uh, the yeah. Secret Service conducting uh, uh reaching out to him can you now confirm yeah. that the secret service contacted you you're absolutely right okay and uh aside from the one individual the airport officer that was terminated has anyone else been terminated or any other adverse action uh, been handed down against any airport employees and if so how many 
you're talking about uh, the online gambling uh, investigation related to the uh, incident yes yeah so yeah uh, so he's the only one that has challenged his termination um and so all other actions that we have given because they're personal matter um i cannot discuss them can you say how many though adverse actions you have uh, given out related to this incident I can say it's more than one. Less than five. Uh, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> Did I put my poker face on. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You might be, you might get investigated if you put your poker face on. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so I I I I can just say you know uh, we we are in coordination with all entities that needs to be. Um, uh, involved in this so yes mm -hmm. is it just the secret service or are we talking like fbi or any other federal entity you know i don't i don't know there i know it's active i don't know who um uh you know possibility when federal agents get together that they they uh, they're you know they help one another out so i to to, to my knowledge i don't know who else in the federal side is working with each other mm -hmm. when when the secret service when did the secret service contact you uh that was uh last year like towards the end of the year or mid-year uh, approximately approximately toward when approximately toward the end of the year uh w yes uh, second half of the year uh, what's this what's the second half mid-year uh i would say more towards the end okay <laughs> yeah like like fourth quarter <laughs> right we should just switch this up to hot and cold every time Serena asks you say hot <laughs> warm cold i don't uh, know okay but but you said toward the end of the year because you know like the chief of police he said that uh, when he was contacted by the secrets or secret not secret service is it secret service yeah okay secret service Are you sure it's secret service yeah it was uh what's his name who's that guy's name okay well when you <laughs> were contacted by the feds uh did they uh give you a name was it just one officer or did they say that it was multiple officers or employees you know it it, it, it wasn't me personally that they contact or they work with uh, you know they they work with our investigators so i don't know exactly uh, I didn't work with names or what uh, I know that that the person of interest is who they were working with and that's that's who they uh, work with okay what about your uh, are you pretty much done on your um, internal investigation or administrative investigation uh, administratively administratively we do we did uh, our our um, we're done with our administrative uh investigation okay. Any other? doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you know uh uh if anything criminal comes out that uh, um individuals that were administratively uh disciplined uh doesn't mean that uh they're not uh, they cannot be disciplined again you know right. did you put out any kind of like agency-wide memo just kind of like hey guys chill on this online gambling thing it's serious well, uh, they, word got around. Uh, we, yeah, we did. Uh, we did some. We did some uh, uh, notices. We did some training. Uh, we conducted ethics training yeah. uh, for all employees, not just uh, uh, certain divisions. We we conducted ethics training for all employees. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we thank you, JQ. Yes, ma'am. All right. Anything else before we let you go? You sound um, like you want to. You want to yeah, tell us something. Yeah, just tell us. Go ahead. Was it Gerard <laughs> Butler? No, no, no. That that's it. It's, uh, <laughs> I just I'm just preparing for my my lab results. <laughs> yeah, he's got a that's doctor's it. appointment. Oh, I told okay. Chris yesterday, man. Yeah, I, I got to go to. Uh, I got my medical appointment. So right on. Well, uh, good luck. Are you fasting? We don't want to get you. Yes, yeah, so I'm fasting. I'm hungry. I'm fasting, <laughs> but. I'm I have to go uh, get my lab results before I can 
nourish myself. There you go. Okay, JQ, thank you. Thanks, JQ. All right. All right. Have a good morning. Right okay. on, you too. Stay safe. Uh, 709 here on the link. Uh, let's go ahead and get right to it, guys. We're bringing back a special guest. Uh, it's been a minute, but uh, she was definitely one of our pandemic uh, partners. As uh, Man, we experienced a lot of highs and lows with uh, our next uh, guest. And uh, like I said, 